Right. Good morning. Don't act early. You're late. People are already here half an hour. Right. Um. Okay. Uh, you know what? We just had class. Then on Monday, you holiday again. <sighs> so what's going to happen? Holiday, holiday, holiday. I can ignore. Um, just act nothing happened. But... Um, now what's going to happen to you? Right. Okay. So today we're going to continue on the... Um, Oops. Did I press anything? Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, I'll be away from it. It seems like this thing is a bit sensitive. Mm -hmm. At least it's touch screen, so I can like play around with it. Okay. Um, so we're going to continue on the plant photoreceptors. So we've got two more to go. I'm not going to touch the, the other plant receptor, the zit loop plant receptor. I think that's a bit too much. Um, you know, since this is the entry level, I know it's called advanced physiology, but actually it's, it's still entrance level if you go to many other universities. Okay, so I think um, having the introduction of three photoreceptors, namely phytochromes, cryptochromes, and phototropins, that are, that are still good enough. And honestly, mostly talk about in plant science. Okay, so we're going to, to we're going to continue with other type of photoreceptor name blue, which is true. It absorbs blue light. Um, why this thing keeps? Is that the issue of this? Oh, I know why. I know why. I know why. I, I know why, I know why. Actually, nothing wrong with this, this computer. I need to reduce the refresh rate. Give me two minutes. I need to sort this out. Yeah. See, here's the culprit. You know, you're being a scientist, you need to detect the, the problem very quickly and then solve it. Let's put it to five hours. Save changes, computer to state, never save changes. Okay, that should be fine. <clears throat> when, you, when you go to other classes, when you're dealing with much older lecturer, do you think they have problem with computer? <laughs> don't be smug about it. One day you're going to be there too. And if you don't up to date, okay? So th that's what I keep saying to you. You need to widen your horizon. Open your mind, okay? Don't, don't wait until it's the last minute for you to update yourself, okay? It's the technology era, so things need to be like very, very dynamic, you know. All right, cryptochrome. So, what are cryptochromes actually? A disclaimer: nothing to do with crypto. If you're buying cryptocurrency and digital assets, stuff like that. Okay, anybody owning any cryptocurrency? Why not? What? No, nobody owning any cryptocurrency. Oh, that, that no, that's that's that that's fine. I mean, like, um, what what kind of crypto do you, do you, do you have? She must be very rich. <laughs> 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 
So crypto from the word crypt, crypt means hidden, secret. The, 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 the root word for it is C-R-Y-P-T, crypt. It's, if you just use the word crypt, it means like a small hidden room somewhere, you know, in the dungeon. So in the past, people use that as a secret room, you know, like a pyramid, right? When, when people open the, the pyramid, then they found about the, the tomb of the pharaoh. They didn't only find the, to the tomb of the pharaoh. They also found, what else? The whole story of the relics from three, 4,000 years ago. All the urns, all the vessels, you know, gold and stuff. So this small room is also called a crypt. Okay? And it has, it has done a very good job for 4,000 of yours. Keep keep it um, hidden, right? But the context is different here, okay? I do not know why is it called exactly crypto chrome. Chrome means comma in Greek. Crypto may be because the, you know, it, it's pretty much hidden. It's not like um, very visible to, 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 your, to your eyes, okay? Um, the thing about cryptochrome and you're going to see another kind of uh, photoreceptor is phytochrome is activated by blue light uh, sorry red light but cryptochrome now you are dealing with the red light a uh, blue light my i slept at two uh, uh, this, this morning so my, my brain kind of not completely dead <clears throat> so what what is it involved in so in essence it's pretty much involved in the um, things like stomatal opening, flowering, triggering, shade avoidance, and deethylation. So you're going to see that when you learn about phototropy, oh, they're kind of same. The, you know, that's, that's overlapping functions because there are still phot blue photoreceptors. So the thing that you need to know here is when we talk about blue light, can you see blue light? No. No. If you don't have blue light, how come you, how you see blue things? Why, why the sky is blue? Why? Is it because blue is the only color in your atmosphere? No. Then why? You can only see blue light. Think about it. Sky is so big, right? It's a whole horizon. When you look up at this in the morning, why is it blue? Why is it blue? This is a very simple question that, that um, you know, primary school children always ask. Kenapa langit biru? The long story short is when the sunshine comes to the earth, it brings all the color in the universe. Colors that you can see, colors that you cannot see. However, not all colors enter the earth atmosphere. Some of the colors are actually being absorbed by our ozone. Ozone is oxygen molecule, but O3. And much of this um, color absorbed by the ozone is actually the UV range of the light. This side here. Yeah. However, when you, if you read in any textbooks, at least the current one, you're going to see that ozone is not the only thing that absorbing light. There, is, there, there, there are, there's other thing that is actually not necessarily absorbing the light from the sun, but deflecting the light. This, this is due to the earth magnetic field. Okay. <clears throat> so you have your planet earth here. My earth look like an egg. It should be sphere, right? 
He's still looking at egg, but it's like, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard to me. My, my, my brain is not working so well because your friend last week poisoned me with rice. So I'm still in the process of de detoxifying. <laughs> yeah. Your friend won a so bad poison, decide to poison me. Oh no. So you have your there's no ink. <laughs> Marker, please. Heal me at the No, let's not help me. Um, I think there's a lot of marker. Can you get um left next door? I don't have um extra marker in this bag. So then like, the other bag. You know, I always have lots of markers, right? That's not uh, provided by university. All lecturers need to provide by themselves. Uh, too bad, too bad. Hasn't got any actually. Hmm. That's all right. Got so many drawers here. Oh, okay. Got two. This belongs to Mama Pengajaran. Okay. So you, this is your earth. And surrounding the earth, you have this invisible layer. And this is ozone. Before the ozone, you have no. Your earth magnetic field. Okay. And here is your sun. So your sun is giving all the radiation possible in the universe. Okay. So much of this light is actually reflected, deflected away from the earth. Some that managed to go through is actually of lower energy. So what gets deflected here? Um, things like um, gamma ray, x-ray, and so on. Yeah, high energy beam, we call that. So some uh, uh, light, UV light, visible light, uh, infrared light, they actually manage to get in because the wavelength is longer so they can travel farther and then they're going to hit the ozone however in the ozone much of the uv is got absorbed as well okay however uv itself it has three types here depending on the length of the wavelength remember the rules that i said maybe like six weeks ago the longer the wavelength what happened to the energy the lower the energy is. So the shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. So UV, you got UVA, B, C. UVV and UV, UVC is the one that pretty much get absorbed by this ozone layer. If it gets, some actually gets through into the earth and then hits your body. And this is the one that's causing... Um, Cancer, actually, yeah. <clears throat> so, what happened to the uh, this UVA? So, the UVA kind of overlapping with a uh, blue color, okay. And the the blue, because we're dealing with the blue blue color now, is actually referring to the three fifty nanometer all the way to five hundred nanometer. So this is pretty much the blue that is being perceived by the blue photoreceptor such as the cryptochrome and also phototropy. Okay, some of this blue you can see, some you cannot. So come again, why the sky is blue? Our atmosphere is not a vacuum, it's filled with molecules of gases. What is the most dominant gas? in the atmosphere 
What? Nitrogen. nitrogen. Yeah. So this nitrogen, um, and then of course other other uh, molecules as well, they kind of refract the light. You know refract. So you got your your mo air molecule here. It can be nitrogen. It can be CO two. It can be H two O. Not H two O. Water H two O vapor. So the light from the sun comes here, it gets refracted. Refract. Go here, that way, go here, that way, go there, here, that way. It happens that at this level, this level here, the most color that gets reflected is blue. Actually, violet. This color, actually, that gets reflected the most. Violet. This UVA an early blue color, this region. And red, most of the red comes to the earth. And the rest of the color. Look at this. Even though this is the region that get most refracted here, your eyes can only see 400 to 700 nanometer. What happened before this? You have 15 nanometer that you cannot see. And that's the violet. And the, this is why you see, instead of seeing the sky as violet, you see as blue. Retina limitation. However, some people, they see sky as uh, violet because their retina is just simply more sensitive. Okay, so you can know that, just, just ask uh, that person, sky is what color? If he or she says violet or purple, or you know, mutant, mutant. Okay? And if you want to read further about this, this scattering effect, scattering index, sorry, index, it's called, if you want to read further about it, it's called, uh, let's see whether I know it or not. Ray play index. Not going to go into further into that. All right? Okay. Now, let's see what happens at this level. So, unlike the red light, the blue light, there are two things happening when blue light is perceived by the plant. Number one, um, the response rate can be instantaneous or it can take a long time to, to happen. And even after the light has gone, the effects of the blue light is still present. It's not like red light. You know, like photosynthesis, for example, when you give the light, the plant is actively photosynthesizing. When you shut the light, suddenly the photosynthesis also stops as well. Blue light is not like that. The, the second law applies here. It is persistent. The response is persistent after the light signal has been switched off. Okay, right. So let's look at here. I think it's easier to use this um, the finger. Okay, so one uh, one effect of blue light is when the plant is receiving the um, uh, blue light. This is just a hypocotyl. Okay, hypocotyl is the your seedling when it's it's germinating. So you got your seeds and then it's germinating, right? So this hypocotyl, <coughs> you can see from the graph here, the moment blue light is given to the little seedling, the growth is going to decrease. And this is the reason why when you give blue light in the plant factory, the, your vegetables, your plant, get shorter. It becomes dwarf. You know, dwarf? Okay, so this is the effect of more blue light. It triggers dwarfism. Do you know dwarfism? Oi, do you know dwarfism? No. What she's doing? Do you know dwarfism? 
No, uh, translation. This is critical, okay? Because this is the effect of blue light. If you give red light, red light makes everything grow. It's, it's the opposite. So that's why I'm highlighting this. Okay? And secondly, the general effect of blue light is you get this um, membrane depolarization. Oh, what is that? Um, anybody? Anybody know what this is? Have you learned this before? Membrane depolarization? Mm, how do I explain this? Um, when we use the word polar, we, we know that something, anything, has the opposite side, the positive or negative side, like the earth, the earth like have the north and also the south. So this is called polar. However, this is known. When you use polar in the sense of verb, polarize or depolarize, it means you make the structure not having any particular opposite direction. For example, cell. You have your cell here. Your cell membrane has gate on the surface of the cell membrane. When blue light comes to your membrane, and your membrane has so many blue light photoreceptors, such as cryptochrome, it will cause the gate to open and let the influx of sodium. And this sodium is in the form of ion. What is the charge of sodium? Plus one. So lots of sodium suddenly flood in into the cell until the blue light stops, okay? So when this happens, this side now has more positive charge, okay? Before this, your cell pretty much balanced. Now, more positive side. <coughs> This is why you see, when you give the blue light here, suddenly the reading of the membrane, it becomes less negative because sodium is positive one. So more positive ions get into the cell. The cell is slightly negative to start with, but when you give the blue light, the sodium channel, so that's the name of this thing, okay? Sodium gate or sodium channel. Sodium channel opens, more sodium gets in, and depolarization start to happen. So one side has more positive value now. So that's why you get this. But it won't happen for long, and eventually, the gate realized, the soda gates realized, oh, I've opened a, a bit too much. Now it will start to close back. This is just the, the nature feedback uh, mechanism, okay? Right, so if you look at this, membrane potential difference in millivolt, no blue light, minus 160 millivolt. With a blue light, there is a sudden loss about minus 100 millivolt. So that's why we know this is the general effect of blue light, okay? All right. <clears throat> Another general effect about blue light, and I think this is important, uh, interesting because this only happens in plant. I don't find any, I do not know, maybe it's been, it's been a while since I, I learned this. <clears throat> Have you ever wondered, all the plants stay under the sun why don't they get black? What happens if you go to, to work at, at your farm? Don't wear hat, don't wear sunblock, no umbrella. What's going to happen to you? You're going to get burned, right? Why? 
the plants do they have umbrella cap nevia sunblock so why why the plants don't get burned they stay under the sun all the time have you ever heard plant get cancer due to sunlight you know many people they like to go to the beach and do some bathing and they end up with the skin cancer right have you ever heard any plants get skin cancer epidermal cancer due to excessive sunlight why why don't why don't plants experience the disease that we experience when being exposed to direct sunlight for a prolonged time so one reason is in plant, there is a special DNA repair enzyme. It's called, I'll just rub this, okay? You know, the bigger board that you give to me, the more I will uh, draw on. So I need to limit uh, my stuff sometimes. Photo lies DNA repair enzyme <clears throat> okay this is what happened when actually this should be the first uh, image uv light we all know that kind of very damaging to the, your dna your dna has nucleotide bases right adenine thymine guanidine what else? Cytosine. Okay. So, for the example here, the timing, one of the nucleotide bases in your DNA sequence, when it receives or when it being hit by UV light, it's going to become unstable. It becomes unstable, it's fine. Oops it will start to create a new product out of it okay so these two product is called the cpd and also c64 photo product cpd stand for i think cyclobutene pyrimidine dimer oh that's very long i cyclobutene pyrimidine dimer so this is the first product of um, the uv attack and the second one it's what is this six four photo product oh let me see whether i can recall it or not oh pyrimidine pyrimidone six four the name is so long photo product Six four P P. Yeah. So these things are not stable. Okay, this is the, the, the result from the UV damage, and it happens to you as well. Do you have timing or not in your DNA sequence? So this thing happened to you. However, in plants, when it when this happened, I already got this thing, the name. Oh god. Why, why, why I force myself to remember things? Next time, if it's already written there, tell me so that I don't have to, 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 to recall a lot of things. So this one, it will trigger the photo damage. And this photo damage is, is due to the formation of CPD. Okay? So in the cells, you will see we have this FAD. FAD is the Flavin adenine dinucleotide. Um, it's kind of like a protein. This thing is the one that is going to trigger the repair of the DNA. However, it is not activated without the presence of blue light. So this is very important. The, the DNA repair mechanism in plant is only possible with the activation of this 
photo repair mechanism. This FAD. This photo layers. This photo layers got a structure. Okay, it's got the structure. And one of the one of the thing that's attached to it is FAD. Alright. <coughs> so this photo layers will attach to this CPD, which is one of the product of photo damage, and it will neutralize it. Okay, when it neutralize it, it will become the timing again. So it's a cycle. And what happened to the FAD? Hey, here, F I, mean, I should I should mention this. So there, there is two form. FADH and FAD minus. This is called flavin adenine dinucleotide reduced, reduced form, oxidized form. Reduced form meaning that it has extra electron to donate. Okay, oxidized form meaning that something has been taken from it. The electron, it's it's lacking electron now. Now it wants to steal. Okay. Um, how can you remember this? Mm, I think I got formula for that. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, oxidation is losing electron. Reduction is gaining Electron, okay, a little help for your chemistry, right? Okay, so this FADH at the end of this, it will become the FAD reduced. Remember, reduced form, oxidized form, right? Okay, so let's see the structure of your cryptochrome now we come to the cryptochrome so cryptochrome is actually a type of photolysis um, protein okay don't worry too much about all of this can you see all this green thing okay so this green thing is the photolysis basic structure okay the thing that makes it a cryptochrome because the fundamental structure of photolysis enzyme now you have two things attached to it which is the fad and mthf what is mthf is actually you know the the, the easy name for this is terrine Methyl tetrahydrofolate. That's the long name for it. Okay. So, very quickly, I'll recap for the cryptochrome. It has got the fundamental structure. The fundamental structure is the photolysis enzyme structure. There, there are many variants of photolysis enzyme. There are, there are many variants, okay, but this is the basic. And when it's being attached to with two components or cofactor, namely FAD, the flavin, and also the terrine, now this becomes cryptochrome. Okay, and this terrine and FAD, if you remember from the phytochrome lesson this is the chromophore the part that actually um, you know absorb the light and then do the rest of the reaction however the difference with this and the phytochrome there is no kinase reaction with the phytochrome if you still remember from your phytochrome Phytochrome like got three parts, right? What are the parts? Do you still remember? 
it's got the it's got the kinase reaction it's got the chromophore chromophore what's the other one oh this can be your exam question right i like to see when people are, oh what's that what's that recall okay so there is no kinase ration there is no phosphorylation what's that yes phosphorylation okay no okay so this is for phytochrome phytochrome cryptochrome phytochrome absorb red light cryptochrome absorb blue light phytochrome do lots of kinase reaction phosphorylation reaction meaning that adding phosphate group to the molecule this no For, no no phosphorylation okay it's actually um just donating um uh, electron okay so if, if it hasn't got any kinase reaction phosphorylation it just give donating electron what do you call that process you should know this you learn chemistry donating receiving electron one receive one donate redox reaction okay redox reaction redox stands for reduction oxidation you thought you are so done with agriculture chemistry now you say it again too bad right <laughs> all right okay all right so for this image is actually in in the book I, I i took it from the book okay so this is the structure of fad and mthf or the terry okay just to tell you okay i don't expect you for you to remember the structure anyway oops oh no this thing okay and pretty much like phytochrome FAD also has its active form and inactive form, like this, okay? So, in the form of FAD, just the molecule itself, flavine, adenine, dinucleotide, the moment blue light comes in, it will become reduced, okay? And this reduced form is actually the active form, okay? But if the blue light is not present or because of the darkness or it's actually being used to repair the DNA uh, damage, it will become oxidized. And this oxidized is the inactive form. FADH minus. Okay. And it will come back to this form eventually. And then come again, the blue light, it will become active again. So this is like a whole cycle going on and on. Okay, so blue light is very important for DNA repair. This is why the plant do not get sunburn. Because cyclobutane, CPD, and also 6,4 photo product, it's not lingering around in the tissue, in the cells. You, on the other hand, you do not have this thing. I think you can check. In internet, I do not know. It's been a while since, since I know about this. I don't think anybody have found this in, in human. Photolyze. You do not have that. And eventually you get cancer. Yeah. Can you prevent it? How? Suns <laughs> sunscreen. What if I cannot afford sunscreen? All I can afford is clothes and food. Umbrella. You you see this this thing, um, photolyase, this FAD, it's donating electron right. So this is actually is a form of antioxidant. So can you eat antioxidant? Yeah, yeah you can eat antioxidant. So it's more food that is high in antioxidant this is why doctor is recommending you to eat 
colorful fruits, vitamin C. What are vitamins that have antioxidant properties? You know vitamins? Some vitamins have antioxidant properties. What are they? Yes. A. Retinol, ascorbic acid. What was what, this? What's the science name for vitamin E? Ish ish ish. Tocopherol. Ascorbic acid. Retinol. Okay. What about minerals? Because when you go to the pharmacy, you, you, you will get multivitamins and minerals, right? What about minerals? Any minerals can, can help with the antioxidant thing? Yes. Um, I think there, there are two. Um, selenium and also zinc. If you go to pharmacy and you see any company selling this formulation, you know it's actually trying to achieve this, to compensate for not having this. Uh, so it shows you that when you know agriculture, actually you can work in pharmaceutical industry as well. All right. All right. Okay. So eat that to stay younger for longer. All right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's look um, what will happen when Cryptochrome is active and when it's not active, what, what are the evidence that tell that, that scientists conclude, oh, this is the function of cryptochrome. It, it causes the plants to be uh, more robust because of higher activity of DNA repair mechanism and also opening the stomata. So let's see. So there is a simple experiment here. I got two images here. So, when the cryptochrome is actually responsible for anthocyanin accumulation in the plant. Anthocyanin is one of the many pigments in nature. And guess what? Anthocyanin is also antioxidant. This is why plants do not need to apply manually the sunblock because it has got internal sunblock, anthocyanin. Actually, you also have internal sunblock, even if you don't apply it. What is it? You, also, you, you already have it by default. Skin is organ. Pigment. It's a pigment. Melanin. Okay? Melanin is your natural, natural sunblock. <coughs> but when you eat... Um, lots of vegetables that contain higher amount of pigments like the mm, purple sweet potato, plum, uh, carrot, you know, if you eat carrot too much, your, your palm can turn orange. These can actually deposit and accumulate in cells in your body. Okay, so can act as a natural sunscreen as well. Right? Okay. So we can see that from this little experiment, CRY1, I want to show this to you. When you whenever you see this, I'll just drop this, okay? Um, CRY, this is for the cryptochrome. The protein, the gene, the name of the gene. It's two ways to, to, to write it. If it's, it's written in, um, that's too small, C-R-Y. If it's written in lowercase plus italic, this is actually a mutant, knocked out. Meaning that that organism is without this gene. The gene, this gene, is not present in this organism. How? 
there are many ways to do that. Scientists can actually um, incorporate into the plant tissue with um, S I R N A. Have you learned this before? S I R N A? Biology? Um, or plant pathology? Small interfering DNA. Oh, sorry, not DNA, RNA. You see, RNA is single stranded, right? Single stranded. So, RNA, um, there are many types. There are mRNA, yeah, tRNA, rRNA. So, mRNA is the RNA responsible to copy your gene. Okay? tRNA is the transfer of RNA. It's important during the protein formation to transfer the amino acid and so on so that you get the string of protein, amino acid. rRNA is the ribosomal RNA. RNA that comes from the ribosome. Okay? So small interference RNA is just a short random RNA. So this RNA can actually, if there is a sequence of your um, gene, crypto, crypto gene, and then it gets translated, it got its own mRNA, right? This small interfering RNA can somewhat pair with this. When it's paired, this mRNA cannot be translated. That's why the word is interfering. It should be mRNA copied from the cryptochrome gene, go out to the cytoplasm to be translated by the ribosome. But midway, somewhere along the line, this siRNA come in and then pair together with this um, mRNA. So when it's in this form, can it be translated? No. So there is no gene produced, no cryptochrome. Okay. Uh, there, there are many ways scientists do it. Uh, scientists can also um, introduce um, small, no, happy, happy RNA. I just, I, just, I just want to introduce you, there are many types of RNA, okay? Happy that RNA is RNA that looks like this. Looks like a happy, instead of one long like this. So this also cause the, this knockout, mutant knockout. So the gene is not present. So what happened when there is a gene not present? You can see that the anthocyanin of the tissue, of the plant tissue, is very low. So this is what evident cryptochrome is important in accumulating anthocyanin in the plant tissue. CRI1 means the very number one. Okay, there are many variants of cryptochrome. In plant alone, such as arabidopsis, there are like three. Okay, you will see there are cryptochrome four, five, and so on like chlorophyll. There are many types of chlorophyll, right? A, B, C, all the way onto E. Okay? Just the variance in nature. Your blood type. Do you only have one blood type? How many blood type you have? Uh, <laughs> how many? Four. Four. What, what are they? A, A B, A, B, O. Is that all? That's the resist factor. I'm talking about the, the, the type. Sometimes, remember I said just now, some people see sky violet because they got mutation in the retina. Some people got mutation in the blood as well. So they have another type of blood type. Now, you know what? It's, it's called um, the H, H blood or H. H. H type. Um, 
Bombay blood. I read later lah. I'm not going to say. I, because it, it, it's confined to the Bombay region. Some people got this um, weird blood blood type, which is kind of dangerous if you got into accident or anything. You know, you, you, you delivery childbirth and then you need blood. Oh, where to get? Uh, Amma. Whoa. I'm already 80 years old. How to give blood? <laughs> yeah. So, cryptochrome is just like blood, our blood as well. There are variants, okay? WT means wild type. No changes at all. Okay? I'll just wrap this, okay? Wild type. No changes as the way it is, as intended by nature. Okay? And then you're going to see a, this is small letter like lowercase plus italic. Another type of this is C R Y. So this type is a capital case, not italic. It means what? Over expression. This one, mutant knockout, no expression. Over expression. You can think of like, like a GMO. The lab GMO. The wild type, the plant, is already expressing cryptochrome gene naturally. But you introduce further cryptochrome into the system. So instead of producing five molecules of cryptochrome, now the plant's producing 25 cryptochrome, overexpression. So overexpression in science, we denote it this way, all capital letter, not italic. So what happens to the anthocyanin accumulation in the tissue? You can see it increased like many, many folds. So this is the evidence how scientists, you might wonder, right, how scientists know this thing responsible for this. For example, blue light cause anthocyanin accumulation. This is how scientists use um, technique like this. And this technique here in molecular biology, it's under this uh, topic, plant transformation. And you can do this in the lab. Yeah, right. Okay, what else that um, the cryptochrome does? Let's see. Oh, my, my thing is not getting in the way. Um, Hypocotylan. Look at this. When you overexpress it, it will be the hypocotyl, the stem of your seedling, will be super short. But when you knock out the gene function, the hypocotyl will be super long, okay? So wild type, that's the natural form of it. So this is the evidence. I got this from a paper actually, okay? <clears throat> Remember PHY? Your phytochrome, phytochrome, okay? So this experiment, so, so this experiment, it, um, it shines the seedlings from various genetic transformation with different light regime in the darkness in continuous blue red light and also the far red light okay so you can see that we focus on the blue okay when you do not have the function of creative chrome the hypocotyl it's not shortening instead it goes very long okay However, nothing happening with the mutants or loss of function for phytochrome A and phytochrome B under the blue light. Okay? And physically, this is what it looks like. When you knock out or remove the gene function of cryptochrome number two, look at the plant. Not only that it is small and short, it's not it's, it's not producing flowers at all. So this is how scientists know. Ah, another function of cryptochrome is to trigger flowering. Because without the presence of cryptochrome number two, 
You see? No, no flower, no, this thing is called bolting. The shoot of the flower stalk out of the plant rosette. There is no flowering. Now look at another example here. The stomata. How, how scientists know cryptochrome is responsible for stomata opening? So while tap stomata, this is what it looks like. Without cryptochrome function, you see, it's a bit smaller. It looks like it, this is the, the resting form of the, crypto, uh, of the stomata opening. If you're not familiar with stomata, do you know stomata? What are they? I hope you know, okay. Hope. I keep on lukis benda buruk. Okay. So, these two is actually called guard cells. Guard cell number one, guard cells number two. This thing here, this opening right in the middle here, we call aperture. Aperture. Together, all of these together, we call stoma. Stomata is the plural. So stoma or stomata is the whole structure. This experiment, it's showing this aperture opening. You know your camera got the aperture, right? Yeah, the f f one point eight f sixteen. You play that around to get the bokeh effect. If you play around with your camera, you can play uh, after that. Okay. So let's see what happened to this aperture here. So this it shows that without cryptochrome, the aperture is not properly open. Okay. What happened when you overexpress cryptochrome one? You see, it opens like mouth, which is interesting because stomata in Greek it means mouth. Yeah, you know, um, you will be very suffering if you are in my botany class because I will just bombard you with all these Greek words. You see it open. So scientists know both cryptochrome 1 and cryptochrome 2 genes both responsible for stomata opening because this is the evidence. When it is overexpressed, both apertures open like crazy. When both are lost in function, completely knocked out like that, the aperture just not opening. They're just in resting state. That's how scientists know. Okay? Right. Yeah, don't worry about the rest. The rest you can read about the rest. Okay, I just want to, to highlight that. Okay? Okay. So, um, just to recap about the cratered chrome, it's to detect the blue light. So why is it important? It's actually of course, to maximize photosynthesis. If the stomata are not opening, how CO2 is going to get in? Without CO2, how Kelvin cycle is going to happen? So stomata is very important. So that's why blue light is very important. And also, it will, to promote deethylation, control of circadian entrainment, and also to control the flowering. Okay? Okay, so what, what happened when cryptochrome and phytochromes come in together? You will see this. They enhance each other effects in promoting seedling deethylation. I hope you still remember etiolation. When your seedling germinating in dark, it looks white, pale. That is etiolation. But the moment you expose your seedlings to light, preferably both spectrum of blue and red light, it will start to green, okay?
because the 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 seedlings now is active and ready to photosynthesize maximally so this is why when you go to the plant factory many plant factory have red and blue color is 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 very unpleasant to your eyes right but this is not about making you happy this is about making plants happy this is the reason why they just give these two lights these two lights being perceived by the photoreceptor phytochromes and cryptochromes okay right yeah so what about in agriculture the function in agriculture so this is from a paper as well um the arrow means to promote the one with the bar indicates to inhibit okay so cryptochrome it promotes flowering stress tolerance and also improve the fruit quality why it improve the fruit quality remember it triggers anthocyanin the pigments accumulation do you want to buy your tomato if it looks white why not you want your teeth to be white so cryptochrome is very important to make your agricultural produce looks pleasant and very attractive it's of course it's healthier yeah but it's also for the marketing purpose okay tomato um chinese bayberry grapevine and also there, there, are, there are many not not only fruits actually also the leaves okay? there are many leaves that contain the anthocyanin when you go outside you look all the leaf green in color right don't be fooled by the green color masking Anthocyanin is also present, but not dominant. Some species, anthocyanin is a bit more. That's why it is manifested in the purple looking. Some species, anthocyanin is a bit less. Chlorophyll is dominating. That's why you get the green color of the leaf. Okay? All right. Oh, yeah. So this this, this is just, just to... Um, to give you some perspective okay cryptochrome not only present in plant it is also present in animals and there is active study now many active studies to see whether humans also have this cryptochrome and actually functioning okay so what what do cryptochromes do in in, in animals do animals need to open stomata? Do animals need to accumulate anthocyanin? Your cat turn purple? Purple cat. Hmm. <laughs> so, so why? Why? So this is this is this is why. Okay. Um, when you're talking about gene, like the cryptochrome gene here. Gene. There are many terminologies under here. It can be analogous, homologous, paralogous, another one, orthologous. Have you seen this word before? <laughs> analogous it's similar to homologous is the same paralogous they kind of go independently but um there are they 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 they, they present in separate entity um autolog mm, that's that's kind of hard to, to explain actually um let me see i know there is a how how to oh let's see give me two minutes
Is this a good one? Let me see. This is Haystone. Okay, look at this is this example here. This is from Wikipedia. So should be stable enough. Okay. All is here like parallel, ortholog, analog, homolog. This is all homolog. Okay. So you have one gene. One gene that originated from a common ancestor. No, 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 you need if you don't believe evolution, believe it for 10 minutes now. You know, some people just go against it. Oh, this is very anti-biblical thing. Oh no, believe it for 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, so you have this gene, histone. You know histone? We learn it in the first class actually. The, the, your, your chromatin kind of spin around this protein bulb. Histone is present in your common ancestor. However, histone over the time, it kind of split. Split not only in different species, but also split in the same species. In, in human, some split in race, in the northern race, southern race, Chinese people, Indian people, Mexican people, European people, Caucasian people, everybody got histone, but of different variation. Okay? So histone that are present in different variation, still in human, but in different variation, we call it parallel. Parallelous. Parallel. Okay? Go line in line. You have it, I have it. But it might be slightly different because you live happily ever after in the four season country. And look at me, flood every day. So I'm just not happy. But I still have histone in my body as well. However, um, this variation that I have, when, when people study chimpanzee somehow, they also find it. The similar thing, histone one in me, the Caucasian, for example, and chimpanzee in Africa also got histone one. So this thing, we call it ortholog, orthologous. Chimpanzee in Africa got histone one. I happen to got uh, histone one as well. Are we the same species? No. So remember. The requirement is that it needs space, speciation in different species, ortholog. And then you have this um, analogous. Analogous, it means histone protein do this um, one specific function. And then when scientists do study in a completely different organism, completely different gene, but having the same function as histone, the name is different, the sequence is different, but the function is the same. For example, like in this case, this bacterial HNS protein, apparently it's got the same function as the histone. That we call it as the analogous, analogous gene. It is the different genes but similar function. The good example for this is cryptochrome just now. Right. Isn't it analogous? Your plant have it. Now the birds have it as well. It is, is it, is it analogous, orthologous or what? No. Which one is it? This can be your exam question. Cryptochrome is present in plant. Cryptochrome is also present in animals such as birds. Or maybe I should tell this, the bird story, then you can decide. Okay, let's continue with the bird story. But you get it, this right. I, one time during Viva, I asked student this question. And this student are uh, doing biotech. 
A simple question, just like this. How can you do four or five years of, of gene transformation and stuff, but you do not know about this? Uh, that, that meat, all right. Um, what is it? Did you see? Okay, this bird thing. So what about it? Okay, let's, let's put it this way. I know uh, maybe you cannot read it properly, but it's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the story. So birds have eyes. Eyes have retina, the tissue at the back of your eyes. In the retina of the bird, it has got this FAD molecule and tryptophan molecule within this protein. And guess what? This protein is the cryptochrome protein as well. In the plant that you learned just now, the component of the cryptochrome protein is the phytolase base. FAD and also the terrin, this thing here. This is for the plant, but for the birds, it has got the cryptochrome base, which is the photolysis fundamental. It has got the FAD molecule, but it hasn't got the terrin. The terrin now is replaced with the tryptophan. Try tryptophan is a type of amino acid. So this is a variance of cryptochrome, okay? This cryptochrome is not responsible for stomatal opening, turning your cat purple, no. This is actually responsible for, um, I'll just wrap this, okay? Have you heard this before? Magneto reception. How how the turtles know to come back to kampung to lay eggs? Purple a uh, turtle. Turtle got GPS. Purple turtle got ways. Or Google Map. In five hundred meters, turn right. <laughs> so how do do animals know? So this is very important for um, migratory birds. Okay, how does it work? I tell you one thing. This thing is actually not being proven physically. Scientists only have partial evidence and strong theory to back this up. Okay, so whoever get this described properly, I think he or she will win the Nobel Prize. So because this is still partially described. Okay. So how does it work? So this FAD molecule and tryptophan molecules, they have the ground state, meaning that no charge to it and so on. However, the moment the bird see blue eyes, these blue eyes will change the state of the FAD and also the tryptophan. Now they become either the single state or triple, triplet state. Okay. You see this direction and also the positive negative charge, right? Okay. This is the difficult part actually. I'm not quite sure how to explain it. Um, to explain this, I think three disciplines come to work together. Biology, like us, plant biology, ornithology, which is the study of birds, and also this, this, this cock up guys. Um, quantum physics. Okay. What, 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 what the heck is quantum physics? I think I put it here. Is it here? Oops. The study of things that are very, very small. <laughs> that, that's all you get. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to explain my, my best, okay, because I'm not a theoretical physicist. So, you know Stephen Hawking? Yes. Yeah, so he was a theoretical physicist. 
So quantum physics, the people who do this is we call it theoretical, theoretical physicists. All they have is theory. And then make the whole planet headache. Okay, quantum physics. Um, my head hurts actually, but it's okay. Lah. Um, so you have your cryptochrome and you have your FAD and then you have your tryptophan, right? So when the blue light comes, this thing can from the ground state, ground state, no charge, whatever. It's just neutral. The neutral state, it can become two state now. The tryptophan and the, sorry, the FAD now, it can become um, something like this, or it can become something like this. Bear with me, okay? Okay, so what the heck is it? Oh. When there is no blue light, we talk about charge first. When there is no blue light, no charge neutral. When the blue light comes, this thing will start to have charge. They are polarized. So the tryptophan becomes the positive and the FAD becomes the negative, okay? However, this thing, this two molecule here, it can align with the magnetic field of the Earth. If it aligns and do nothing, it's fine. It aligns, then it will start to spin in opposite direction. This thing, it has got charge now, right? But you got your Earth, your Earth have magnetic field. We are in magnetic field, but you cannot see it. Somehow, this thing is aligned with the magnetic field, depending on its, its, the, the situation of the bird, this thing, this invisible line now. So the moment it aligns with the magnetic field, the magnetic field, depending on the orientation, it will determine whether this thing is going to spin, these two things, going to spin in the same direction or in the opposite direction. One goes, can I do that? I can I can I can do it. <laughs> can you do it? One go here, one go back here. <laughs> can you do it? Yeah. So this this um spinning, when it's in the opposite direction, we call it singlet state. Here, when it's In the same direction, it's called triplet state. Yeah. So this is this is this is how the birds know which direction it goes. For some reason, in in the in the retina. Now remember, I told you your eyes is actually your brain. So the moment the retina kind of get activated. The cryptochrome get activated, and then the activation is coupled with either singlet state or triple state. The birds now know which way is north, which way is south. Charge alone, positive, negative, doesn't tell much. That is only for DNA repair mechanism. But now, when the charge molecule is spinning in and in, in either singlet state direction or triple state direction, the birds interpret that with north or south or whatever direction there is. Okay? So it's pretty much like your vision. Your vision is actually depending on the light that gets into you and then your brain is the one that creates the visualization. There is no guarantee that whatever I see is the same that you see. It depends on whatever your brain will interpret. Right? 
So this is the thing that cryptochrome does to the bird. Okay. So when this happen, then the bird, this retina will convey electrical signal to the earth and then the bird will start to position its flying body to the right position. So literally, the birds can go back hometown kampung with eyes closed. It's okay. Is it only in birds? Mm, what, whatever migratory animals that you're talking about. Turtles, you know turtles? They lay the eggs and then they kind of swing all the way to Australia because Malaysia, you know, not so happy. But when it comes time to spawn, to lay eggs, oh, I have to go back to kampung now. So the, in the sea, it's very dark, right? You cannot see. At least the bird can see. Oh, the birds can see. Oh, the purple cannot see. It's, it's so dark in, in, in the ocean. So not to worry, magnetic field will guide it. So it just remember the signature of the place. So each place on the earth got um, signature magnetic reading, which is if you open your phone. Remember I, I showed you the GPS status thing? For the light, light reading, another thing that GPS data can read is magnetic uh, field. Where is that thing? Yeah, see? Magnetic field. So this magnetic field is very signature from places to places. All right? Depending on, you know, whether it's more north or more south or right in the equator. Right? So that's what... Uh, guide the birds during uh, migration okay all right all right so that's the story of cryptochrome all right mm. okay Kyo. <laughs> can you remember everything why not that's not fair i'm the only one who remember everything you need to suffer as well Okay. All right. Okay. Before before we go quickly to phototropic, any question about cryptochrome? Did you know this story before? Cryptochrome. Hmm. This is the thing about agriculture. You cannot run away with understanding the nature. You you know about the plants. You need to know about animal. You need to know about the pla the planet itself. This is why our faculty got seven departments. We got the plant department, which is here. We got the animal. We got the soil, land, and so on. We got the business, marketing, economic, and stuff. We got the disease, pathology, fungus, bacteria, virus, protis, amoeba. Okay, and we also have the aquaculture, marine, algae, kelp, and stuff. So if you notice, our whole faculty of agriculture is actually describing the whole planet right so never look down on agriculture because in order to be a good agriculturist you need to know a lot of things right okay economies uh, some people say uh, is that important the economy uh the, the business department that they these people you know when you learn very deeply actually they, they deal a lot with laws You'll be surprised, actually, these people. Is this the law school? Yeah, yeah, they have. They need to know about the law as well. Yeah, because summoning people is so fun. Like suing that like, people. Okay, all right. Question. Good. Not good. Want to be birds now? <laughs> okay. So, let's go to the phototropy now. Also, a photoreceptor. Um, Actually, this should be your homework. Yay. I say, I don't want to suffer alone. Go down. You, you need to go down as well. So before this, the phytochrome or the excitement, you kind of do it in separate group, right? So this assignment is special. I need you. Don't worry. I'm going to introduce the topic of phototropin first. Then, then you can decide how you want to achieve this. Um, so, phototropin is also a blue light receptor. However, 
I think it's more similar to phytochrome because phototropin can do four spore relation, the kinase activity that this um, cryptochrome cannot do. Cryptochrome do the redox reaction, receiving, donating, gaining electron. Okay, so let's look at the phototropin. So it's in, involved in phototropism, chloroplast movement, and also again stomata opening, because stomata is really really opened by the blue light. Okay. Um, phototropism. Um, do you know phototropism? Do you remember? When you have plants, you have lights on one side, the plant will grow towards the right. Not toward the right, toward the light. So that is called positive phototropism. Okay? Right. Um, but there is... Let me, let me, let me recall. Photo... I think there is, there is another term. Um, Photo taxis. I feel like I feel like I should tell you something about this. In addition to phototropism, what is it? Huh? Is it? I already forgot. Photo taxis. One moment. Sorry. Ooh, this is a uh, wrong, wrong story. Oh, okay, 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 I remember, I remember now, I remember now. Okay. Phototropism, when the, when the organism going towards the light. Phototaxis, when something, not necessarily organism, it can be just cells, go, growing, um, closing to the light or away from the light. Like, you know, some, some, um, like, uh, living cells. If you, if you have one light, the, the whole cell will actually go all, the, it doesn't care about the light, whether more or less, as long as there is light, it will crowd around the light source. Some organism like light. Organisms that do not like light, they will go towards the dark, purposely go towards the dark, darkness. So this is called phototaxis. So that's a different, okay? Phototropism. Phototropism is shaping the structure towards the light. Phototaxis is growing and living in the presence of light. Tendency to go towards that, right? All right, let's look at this. Oh yeah, uh, this is a very classic experiment. You should know this. If you do not know this, uh, go back to standard one. The Darwin's experiment. So you go, you have this. Um, I think you learn this when you learn about the auxin, right? Yeah, auxin alone is not enough. So it's also due to the phototropin um, sensing also, okay? Oxin plus phototropin. Um, then, yeah, the positioning of the chloroplast. So, I want to correct your understanding about one thing. Because I see most textbooks do this. I'm sorry, I just dropped this. When you have plant cells, usually the textbook way of doing this, you will have your nucleus right in the beginning. And then you have your chloroplast, 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 chloroplast. This is actually incorrect. Okay. Actually, during photosynthesizing activity, photosynthesis, chloroplast is actually, it's on the cell wall. They, they, don't, they don't really scatter about like that. No. Uh, there's a word for this. Uh, pressed to cell wall. Why? 
There is a reason actually. Increase efficiency. Uh, yes. Uh, how? Because it's closer. It's closer. So uh, what is what travel so much? Nothing to do with light just now. It's actually for the CO2. Um, two reasons, okay? Two reasons why chloroplast is actually positioning itself oppressed to the cell wall. Um, one is to shorten CO2 journey. CO2 here and CO2 needs to go here. Which one is more efficient? Press. A press, right. Why? Why need to shorten the CO2 journey? To reduce resistance. You see, the journey of CO2, I'll tell you the journey of CO2. The journey of CO2 to do Kelvin cycle in photosynthesis. So CO2 is from the atmosphere. Then it will meet with the um, leaf surface. Then it will meet with the stomata. Then it will meet with the in, in, intercellular air space in the leaf. Then it will meet with the uh, cell wall. Then it will meet with the plasma membrane. Then it will meet with the chloroplast before it can do the Kelvin cycle. You see the journey here? Each of these is resistance. Resistance. CO2 need to overcome. This is the symbol for resistance. CO2 needs to overcome resistance in each of this structure before it can proceed to the next structure. From here to here to here to here to here to here. If chloroplast floating about in the cytoplasm, it just adds another resistance. Which is cytoplasm resistant unnecessary so by having the chloroplast oppressed to, to the cell wall the cytoplasm resistant can can be eliminated so that the photosynthesis is more efficient okay all right coming back to the um, so I have corrected your understanding, okay? So please don't don't think chloroplast is floating about, okay? All right. So uh, with the low light, you can see that the chloroplast they kind of either in the top or in the bottom of the cells, like this. During the highlight, there is a avoidance syndrome. The chloroplast is not going to face the light, meaning that the blue light directly, it will go to sideways, okay? And then in the darkness, it will start to accumulate in the bottom. Look at this. In any lighting situation, do you, do you see the chloroplast in this manner? No. It is always oppressed to the cell wall. So this is the correct representation of the chloroplast actually. Okay, so please correct your understanding, right? Okay, and then uh, what else? Ooh, what's this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember, I remember this, this issue actually. Um, if, if you have too much light in certain region of the leaf, it will make the chloroplast to stay away from it. When chloroplast is shying away, that region is actually looking faded, whitish. Okay. I feel like I feel like I remember something. My my head start start to hurt. My, my, my head start to hurt. Um.
kejap my membrane inspirator index yes so you yeah yeah it's from a magazine wow. so there's a chinese word written on it Oh yeah, that what is it? It's a Chinese word. Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, my, 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 my brain. Somebody poisoned me, and then. Kuang. <laughs> let's see how much I, I. Let's see how much I can remember. It should be. Jindo. Yes. Yeah, that thing is. Hold on five minutes. I want to remember something. Hold on five minutes. I want to remember something. So, one, two, three, four. So, one is here. One is here. One is here, here. One is here. Right? So, Kuang is. <laughs> this is number? One. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm. Uh, so Shu Tian uh, Pie Hung yes. Pie lagi um, uh, Shu Wan Ko Six strokes, it should be six strokes Six strokes. So this should be the shoe stroke. Shoe. So it should be. Chukoga? Chukoga? Mula mula. Shoe. Pastu. Tian. Pastu. Pie. Pastu. Hung. Pie lagi. Pastu. Shoe wongo. Oh, tak tahulah aku berapa. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Awak yang salah. Sebab tu lah ni kan? Ah, so, this is light. This is this is light. You know, I think Chinese is, is very... Uh, so, the uh, the other side must open their eyes now. Oh, this guy knows things. Okay, okay. I think, I think, okay. Um, so, if you have your base character like this... So if you add like this, it should be sunshine, right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, if you have a gain like this, um, isn't it moonlight? Yes. 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 Yay! <laughs> Sakit kepala dah. Sakit kepala dah. Sakit kepala dah. I remember something without this part. So it should be you have that small dash, you've got a hung, you got. Yeah, Is it you want? Uh, okay, 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 just checking, just checking, just checking. You're not you're not going I went to China a couple of times. So, um, I think I do not know. Lah. It's, this is like uh, five, six years ago. Don't talk about Google. No WhatsApp. No nothing. Like I want to want to um, strangle everybody. You 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 try your phone from because because I I came straight from UK to China. It's it's like nothing. You cannot cannot use nothing. Yeah. So I, I had I had to memorize a lot of things. Yeah. And I remember this, you know, I do photosynthesis, right? You deal with light a lot. So I remember this character. And then there's there's somebody told me, oh we got six strokes. Oh yeah, fine. <laughs> then then I only realized that if you know one character, if you do put something else, then it becomes oh that's another word order together, All right? Sunshine. So this should be young. Young, this should be you at Takut tak the things I know. <laughs> you know, if you're a student, right? I was supposed to be a student. Like this was like what, what 10 years ago. Somebody advised me to be like, you know, this is going to be difficult for you because not many people do this, and then you you'll be a alone, alien in most of the time. 
Somebody advised me to be like, force yourself to be street smart. Do whatever it takes. So just, uh, okay. <laughs> so, you see, I know Chinese. So you should, you should, you, you should, you should, you should uh, learn a lot of English now. <laughs> imagine, imagine if I was in your classroom, I'm like your friend, same batch with you. You'll be very threatened with me. <laughs> like, eh, berdia ni, kenapa tak mati lagi? <laughs> Alright, okay. So, you got Kuang. Kuang, is it Kuang? Kuang, Kuang. Is it K or G? Guang. Guang, Kuang, G. Kuang. So, they, they have this um, laser, blue laser actually. They have this blue laser just on the Kuang character and then after a while after they stop the laser the the, the quant character part becomes white so when they do the study on the microscope they see that the is uh, the tissue didn't die the tissue is not dead it's just the chloroplast move away yeah so that's why it's better and then after a while this quant is it's 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 it, it, it's gone because the green comes back Okay, the, the chloroplast positioning itself back. Yeah, so that's the story. Yeah, okay, and then this is about the phototropin and stomatal opening. Okay, so there's a whole lot of reactions here, but basically the stomata uh, is open because phototropins on the, remember this structure? Have I, yeah, I have. The gut cell. Okay, the gut cell. So the gut cell is equipped with phototropin. It will perceive the blue light. And then a lot of cascade reaction will happen and it will trigger this hydrogen proton hydrogen pump. Plasma membrane proton pump. And then this will cause the gut cell to either swell or do the, the swelling. Okay? Yeah, I don't want to talk too much. I just want to highlight with you um, what, what, what needs to be done. All right. Oh, okay, okay. That's a video thing. Okay. Before we see the video, so what I need to do now, you to do now is both groups, Chuhat and Onghuat, create a short lecture slide. Or you, it, can, it can be like two pages or anything. Just talk about the phototropins. You see how much I talk about the cryptochrome? I talk about the structure, the history of it. So both groups work together now to create one assignment about the phototropin. I don't know how you want to, dec uh, to decide to, to, to divide it. Maybe some group work on the structure. I didn't mention here, but for the phototropin, this thing is also present. And I give you a hint. For the phototropin, that thing is love. L-O-V. Make sure this story is in, the, in, in your assignment. The structure. Cryptochrome, photolyase, is the structure. And then started embedded with FAD and terrine. For phototropin, this is the structure. I want that to be in your assignment. So... What format? It can be a poster one page, it's fine. It's fine. You just one page and then we can, you know, go about and make it make things bigger. Oh, okay. I really appreciate if students just submit that one page assignment. One page that I can that okay, I can bigger. Okay, this is not about okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so work together now, okay? All this while you are on your own. Now you need to learn to cooperate. Uh, yeah, cooperate. I'm your common enemy now. <laughs> right? Okay. So I think that's all for today. Let me have a video. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um. Partly, partly because um to prevent the photo damage, photo inhibition. Because blue light 
it's still high energy. Okay, so when it's high energy, chlorophyll in the chloroplast needs to dissipate this excess energy. If it's too busy dissipating excess energy, no real photochemistry can happen. You need water in your home, but when there is too much water to the point of flooding, you keep on busy pouring out all the water out of your home. You should be using the water to do the work, cooking, washing and everything. But there's just too much water now. You need to deal with this excess water first before you can use the intended water for your activities. So that's why chloroplast, how chloroplast move? Cytoskeleton, which is you learn in the first lecture, right? The, the, the cell architecture cytoskeleton, microtubules, and so on, tubulin, those things actually move the, your organelles around, right? Okay, yeah, does that answer your question? Okay, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But why is sodium like what's the function of sodium going in? Is it or other ions like potassium? Um good question. Um sodium. Actually, this is happening in, in our body as well. Actually, the story is partial. I didn't want to go too much because I'll get crazy when it comes to physics. Um let's put it this way. So um our body plant's body, we have electrical activities in our body in, we, that is called impulses, okay? So these signals, impulses, in order to propagate from one location to another location, it doesn't go like light, straight. No, it is being passed like a baton race, relay. One take one and then pass to another. And then this is achieved by the different in charging. When there's a different in charge, positive and negative, then only this thing will come together, attract, and when they attract, then only the signals can pass through. If the signals is the same, it, it's, not, not, it's, it's not going to come together. When it's not come together, all these electrical signals, it's not moving. This is how your battery works. That's, this is why your battery has negative and positive side to facilitate electron flow. If your battery is both negative or both positive, there is no electron flow. There is no electron flow, no electricity. Your light is not going to go on. Okay, so why sodium? Sodium is, only, is actually part of the story only. It's actually coupled with potassium, always. Sodium is to represent the positive charge and potassium is to represent the negative charge. Is it true? Is it true? Chloride. Cl. Cl. Cl minus. That's why your salt, your table salt is NaCl. That's why. That's why because it needs to balance all this positive and negative charge. So why, 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 why sodium? Okay, so this is, this is the simplest, easiest form of charge that can move small enough to go through the plasma membrane and also small enough to exit the plasma membrane. Influx and efflux. Can it be other elements? Yes, but if it gets too bigger, cannot fit through this gate. So nature is quite smart. It uses one of the smallest elements to know. If you look at the periodic table, I can show you the periodic table actually. Why we learn a lot of chemistry today? My head hurts even more. Do you like chemistry? Oh, God. And physics. I can teach physics. 
Uh, oh, that's too small. Uh, I'll just open it in the big one. Okay, that's that seems nice. Why is this small? Uh. Is it because I'm using this thing brief? Right, one moment. Uh, I'll go here. One moment. Should be large. And then internet is acting up. Why UPM is like this? No. I just want to view the image. Anyway, anyway, actually you can see from here. So let's see here. So in nature, it uses sodium and chloride, both in the first group of periodic table of element and also the um, the group 17, okay? Which is group 17 has got a name as well. What is it? The halide group. You know halide? Halide means salt. The salt group. Can it can can it use um other other thing from the group? Yes, it can use. It use cesium. Or it use what is this? AP is what? I cannot see. <laughs> Why this thing doesn't get big? Okay, get big. Ah, it's big. S still S S S ten S ten S thirteen. <laughs> Look at this um, atomic number. It gets bigger. This is only 11. By the time you go to cesium, 11 to 55, five times bigger. And guess what? Cesium is radioactive. Radioactive. You know, people um, mutate the plants using radiation, right? One of the elements people use aside gamma radiation is cesium radiation we have here in nuclear institute in bangi in bangi they use this cesium okay and it's the same for the 17 group right so this is why nature do not use it um why so why why don't you it what the, why won't it use lithium and fluoride yes it's not stable it's not stable lithium in the it, 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 it's just because it's plus one, right? It will start to stealing all electron because it, it, it needs to balance out itself, right? And fluoride, most of the time, is in the form of molecular, molecule, fluorine. Okay, so the best, the best bet here is sodium chloride. So that's why. Okay. Um, the gate can accommodate the biggest sodium. Anything smaller can go in as well. But sodium is already small. So it's very hard for, for, for anything else to, to pass through. Something smaller, water can. H2O, H is very small. Right. But can the gate let pass through um, potassium? No, because potassium has got its own channel. And some of this channel, uh, it's, it needs uh, active uh, energy, ATP, to open and close it. All right? Okay, does that answer the question? All right, good, good, good. Okay, uh, finally, movie time. Do you want a movie or do you want? Nobody want? Nobody want? Movie. Movie about magnetoreception. This is about, about the cryptochrome actually. Uh, let's see. Can 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 you shut this light row? Oh internet. One moment, okay. I need to oops. Pause, pause. Let me increase the quality.
imagine waking up on the beach for a dawn. The glimmer of light leads you to the shore. Suddenly, a wave pulls you in. At first, you use the direction of the waves to guide you. But once you're in the open sea, with powerful currents bombarding you, and a very little light, how can you be sure of where you are and where you're going? For a hatchling sea turtle, the answer is magnetoception. That's the ability to sense magnetic fields. We know many animals use this sixth sense for navigation. What we don't know is exactly how magnetoception works. Here's what we do know. Earth itself is like a giant magnet. The motion from its liquid outer core generates a magnetic field. Certain animals can sense this field and use it as a compass to tell them if they're heading in the right direction and a magnet to give them signposts along the way. There's two competing theories for how magnetoception works. One is a chemical sensor and the other is, is a mechanical sensor. The first theory is that animals have tiny actinotype particles in their bodies that act as magnetic receptors. Magnetite is the most magnetic natural metal on Earth. It's been found in many animals that exhibit magnetoreception. And it's thought that it's the only potential sensor that can be sensitive enough to capture these incredibly tiny variations in the magnetic field strength that would allow the animal to, to not just know whether they're going north or south along the magnetic field line, but know the precise beach that they need to get to. The other theory is that animals possess a protein in their eyes called cryptochrome, which allows them to see magnetic fields. Cryptochrome has been found in the eyes of several migratory birds, but we haven't proven either theory for a few reasons. With magnetoreception, you don't know where to look. Magnetic fields pass invisibly through the entire body, so researchers don't know exactly where these magnetite particles or cryptochromes would be attached to particular cells, and so mistakes are made all the time. And so far, cryptochrome experiments have only yielded positive results in the presence of magnetic fields much stronger than Earth's. The, the frontier is now so, not so much at the animal behavior level, but actually getting inside the brains of these animals and trying to find uh, these sensing cells and connecting them to the neural circuitry. It's not so much a question of, of which animals have this sense, but which don't. So researchers have said, well, why not humans? Maybe we had this sense at one point deep in our evolutionary past and lost it, but maybe there's a vestige left. Researchers in California and, and Japan have gone after this, this holy grail one more time um, with a very specialized experiment, one that relies on double blinding and uh, magnetic shielding, and they're seeing glimmers, maybe even more than glimmers, of this magnetic sense in humans. It's starting to be reproducible, and I'm really excited about it. Okay, so that's the quick story of uh, Crypto Pro. Okay, um, so yes, why? Because when I close my eyes, because I have to make sense, because sense of what? You could sense the class about to come to the end. <laughs> Alright, okay, okay. So I think that's all for today. So the phototropic is a little assignment for you to do. Now, not only just your group, now you need to cooperate with the other group. Okay? You can be as creative as you want. You want to include the video? Then so be. I don't care. Alright? Okay? Alright. So, any question before I need just to check your assignment for each group. I need to make sure that you are up to par. All good? All good? Okay, um, the group want to go first. Come quick so that you can go back quick. I want to go back quick as well. Um, uh, on what? You want to come first? To come first? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, what do you want to do? Is it going to be a little bit of 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 a little bit
Why there is no image? Shouldn't people know what your uh, box needs to look like? Um, on the best of the team, that because uh, the team wants to be The progressive data, right? The progressive during the fertilization. But uh, actually, on the on the beginning, in the beginning, mm -hmm. we only have the data of the like uh, the diameter like that. So it's not same. Every data is not same. Not same. How? Oh. Like uh, the number of the bar when you take it. Yeah. On the on the twenty day, on the twenty day, on the twenty day, you take the width of. If that is the case, you simply do not have progressive data. Mm -hmm. You still have weak data. Yeah. That is still data as well. Mm -hmm. So, for parameters that you take regularly, you can have progressive analysis for data that you only <coughs> took for only, like only one month or only one time off. That's the only data that you have. So you don't have to do the progressive thing about it. Yes, yes, yeah. So you need to utilize the graph, the graph, the figures. Um, this actually should be in the appendix. Uh, we, we, we don't we don't need to see the numbers here. We just we just need to yeah, see the graph. See the graph there. Oh, sorry. Oh. We need to put the image. Yeah. yeah. So we are planning to do the two sides. So let's go. So if you don't put this data, the data will be in the database. In the main thing, you just put the graph or pie chart, spider chart, or anything. Okay. So this thing, even look at the general publication. Nobody put raw data in the publication. But uh, your data is present in the supplementary. Yeah. So have your presentation. If you want to put it in everything on A3, that's why put everything on A3. The image, the figures, the graph, whatever. And then have a link somewhere for the supplementary data. Um, uh, that's that's good enough. So and then you need to submit a full report. That's that is the, 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 the essence of it. The essence of it. Yeah. What is the take home message? Because you have your hypothesis, you have your your um, your aims, the background, the problem statement of your study. So you conduct the experiment. Okay. Now what's the target? The things turn out as you expect or otherwise. If it's work against what you hypothesize, then that's why. Is there any room for improvement? Right? Okay. Something simple. Right? Okay? Alright. Okay. Age. What's this? Ground nut. Ground nut. Show here, please. Why? 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 No, no, no. Put here. I want I want to see now. Yeah. 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 Actually, um, you yeah. can see the poster. Visualization of the experimental unit. Um, sure, sure, sure. Okay, um, yeah. Or maybe you can ask. Wait, where is it? 